والنجم إذا هوى ما ضن صاحبكم وما غوى أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم ألكم الذكر وله الأنثى تلك إذا قسمة ضيزا إن هي إلا أسماء سميتموها أنتم وآباؤكم ما أنزل الله بها من سلطان إن يتبعون إلا الظن وإلا الظن وما تهوى الأنفس ولقد جاءهم من ربهم الهدى أم للإنسان ما تمنى فلله الآخرة والأولى وكم من ملك في السماوات لا تغني شفاعتهم شيئا إلا من بعد أن يأذن الله لمن يشاء ويرضى رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي فالحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد everyone once again السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته I pray Allah gives me clarity in speech and organization of thought so the lessons that I'm hoping to share with you are shared with you in a way that you can benefit from inshallah so we're on ayah number 22, the, the ayah before this that we discussed, and I, I laid the groundwork for it yesterday was, you have daughters, or you, Allah has daughters, but you get to have sons. You get to have sons, he has, he has to have daughters. He then says, Tilka idan qismatun liza. That, meaning that whole idea, if that's the case, in idan means in that case, qismatun, that is a division that is Bliza. Bliza. Now try to say that for me. Bliza. That's a really hard word to say. Okay? Blad and za are actually similar palate in the mouth. Now in, in Arabic, we study something called balagha. And we also study something called fasaha. And fasaha means speech that is clear. And Fasaha, the linguists, they have categories, what makes speech clear, right? And one of the, one of the things that takes clarity away from speech is when you use letters in a word that are too close to each other. And so the Arabs don't like to say words where the, where the way your mouth is going to move is going to be close. Every letter of it is going to be close. So Kaf and Qaf don't like to be close to each other too much. Or Baad and Ba, for example, on the same word, doesn't shava, you know, you, you know it, it, it becomes difficult. So the letters have to be sufficiently spaced apart in your mouth for the word to sound clear. Okay? So this is, you know, this is why, by the way, there are languages that the syllables sound so close to each other that when you're trying to make sense of what people are saying, you're like, because I, I was in Taiwan, and in Taiwan, you know, the, the, mashallah, the Muslims in Taiwan, somebody said their name. They said Abdul Karim. I was like, yeah, but what's your, like, like your super name? And they said, and I was like, okay, yeah, Abdul Karim, okay. Because there was a, there was a sha, and there was a zh, and those sh, zh, uh, and they, they're, they're so close to each other, and they know how to tell them apart from someone who studied the Arabic language. Those are too close to each other. So you don't put them next to each other. You see? So what happens in the word Liza is actually, by Fasaha standards, an ugly word. This is actually considered an ugly word. By the way, this is the only time this word is used in the entire Quran. And scholars describe how the ugliness of this word is corresponding to the ugliness of the belief. And so the word was used because it depicts not only the belief that is, it sounds ugly because it is ugly. Now let's look at the meanings of this word. Ba'zahu, madaghahu. When, when somebody does ba'z, the verb, uh, is actually because they chewed on something. Wa akalahu wa famuhu mal'an. 
is baza. That would be the dictionary translation. If I ever publish a dictionary that speaks, when you click on Liza, you'll hear, you know, like when you talk during iftar. Okay. Then chew and move around. He chewed and moved the date around in his mouth. Some people are really disgusting with how they eat. Like they're just really like, nom, nom, and there you could see, you could, you could tell everything that's happening inside the, <laughs> you know, and, but you know, when kids do it, they, they do the gulp out loud. Do you see that? <laughs> you know, this is all part of visa, like moving food around in your mouth, the uncomfortable sounds that it makes. Then it was also used for, because the back in the day, they had the siwak, right? The, the, the miswak. And when they used it too much and it started splintering and getting nasty, and you're like, you want to borrow mine? No, no, no. That's disgusting. It's Liza. It's already all chewed up. It's already all used up. Okay. Well, Duza min rijal. Then they use the word Duza for a certain kind of guy. That guy must be a doozy. Eh. Anyway. A pathetic person, a low life, a scumbag. That would be a dude that is called a Duza. Duza, right? Now, you, some of you guys are like, now I finally learned something I can use in my life. Yo, Duza, what's going on? Hey, I like that. That's a cool nickname. Yeah. So, so anyway, and then it was used for uh, 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 they called a person Duza because they, he was ugly physically or his values are like chewed up. He has no values like the food that's been chewed up. It was used for when somebody cheats somebody, when somebody scams somebody. That would be, you know, you get visa phone calls nowadays, right? So that's, that's where this is, this word is associated with. Allah says, what a scam division. What an ugly division. What a division in which you chew the food and spit out the ugly and give that to God. This is the word that's being used to describe what they believe. Now, just as I was preparing for today, I was like, subhanAllah. Allah took the first passage where he took us to the heights of beauty. And then he's taking us to the lows of ugliness in this passage. It's a direct contrast between the two. You see? The highest of the high and now the lowest of the low. لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي أَحْسَنِ تَخْوِيمِ ثُمَّ رَدَدْنَاهُ we reduced him to the lowest of the low. And that's what's happening. This remarkable contrast is happening. And from it, what should we learn? We should learn the, 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 not judging people. The Quran doesn't judge people the way it judges ideas. The Quran empowered me and empowered you to judge ideas. And you know what? Anything that stands against Islam is liza. It's chewed up, disgusting, spit out, used toothbrush. Fraud, scam. It's low life. It's, it's pathetic. Not the person, the idea. Tilka idan qismatun diza. So, Alusi rahimahullah commenting on this word, he said something more. He said, manqusa. Manqusa means something that's lacking. What a, what a, an incomplete thought process. Ghayru mu'tadila, unfair. Wajubiza an yakuna diza fi'la bil kasr. It could be on the pattern because Arabic scholars, tafsir scholars in the linguistic tafsir, they don't just look at a word and its meaning. They pay attention to how it sounds. Diza starts with what haraka? You guys know dhamma fatha kasra? What haraka does it sound with? Start with? The kasra, right? Urdu speakers, Farsi speakers, zairast. Okay, zair, right? So the zair is fi'la. This is fi'la. And fi'la is like dhikra. Right? And there are other words in Arabic like this, like shi'ra, which is coming later on, or difla. When you have words like this, these, they are words for ideas that are meant for an extreme. This is sigatul mubalaqa lil masadir. So, diza means extremely ugly, extremely fraudulent. It's not just the idea, it's ugliness. And by the way, it's a masdar. Annahu masdarun kadikra. And this is the other important thing here. Um, I've explained this concept many times, but for this purpose, we need to review it. If I say this is a white mug, then white is an adjective, right? But if I said this mug is whiteness itself, it's not white, it is what? Whiteness. 
is whiteness. I'm taking it too far. It's not, it's not that important. But I'm saying when you think of the concept of white, the infinite concept of white, the idea of white, all of it is some fused together into this one mug. I'll give you another ridiculous example. This person is knowledgeable. Knowledgeable is an adjective. I said, this person, man, this guy is knowledge. He's knowledge itself. Too far, bro. Because that, what does that mean? All of knowledge has been encapsulated inside this person. So usually we don't describe things with ideas because knowledge is an adjective and knowledge is an idea. Knowledgeable is an adjective. Knowledge is an idea. You don't describe things with ideas. But in Arabic, you can. In Arabic, you can. And when you do, that means the entirety of the idea has been encapsulated in this. It's as if the next time you think of ugliness, ugliness itself is this. It isn't just ugly, it's ugliness itself. It's the idea itself. It's the highest form of mubalagha, of hyperbole in the Arabic language that you can use. And this is done on a number of occasions for different kinds of concepts. This is something that's used in Ayatul Birr when Allah says, لَيْسَ الْبِرَّ أَن تُوَلُّوا وُجُهَكُمْ Al-Birr is this, this is a mustar, عَلَى صِيْقَةِ الْمُبَالَغَةِ This is where it's used. Other places in the Quran it's used. You know, عَلَمٌ لِلسَّاعَةِ for, for uh, uh, Isa alayhi salam. So this concept occurs in other places too.